So what we just looked at was basically all the events in Photosystem 2 that basically led up to uh, the production of totally reduced plastocyanin. Okay, remember plastocyanin had that copper ion that's held tightly there that accepted the electrons ultimately from cytochrome F of the cytochrome B6F complex, okay? But what we're actually going to find now is what happens to the electrons that are now in plastocyanin. Okay, so what we're going to be talking about is photosystem 1, and as we'll find... Um, it doesn't appear to be as complicated as photosystem 2, and I'm going to try to make it as simple as possible. Okay, so coming down here to this picture, this is a really good picture. Um, the same type of thing is going to happen that we saw in photosystem 2 is that you're basically going to have light that strikes these antenna molecules. Okay, so in photosystem 1, there's these antenna chlorophyll type molecules that are going to receive the light and through Forster resonance energy transfer they're going to transfer these exciton energy packets ultimately to a special pair of chlorophyll molecules so this is a special pair of chlorophyll molecules and when those when the special pair of chlorophyll molecules get excited they're going to be the p700 as a whole is going to get raised in energy okay so this structure right here this is the p700 okay and it's going to get raised in energy okay so if we come back up here okay if we come back up here okay uh, this P700, when it receives the excitons from the antenna molecules, notice how it get, gets raised in energy. Okay, When it gets raised in energy, it actually transfers an electron to this thing labeled as A sub 0. And A sub 0 is an electron acceptor chlorophyll. Okay, So we denote that right here. So this is the A sub 0. So ultimately, the special pair of P700 is going to donate an electron to this chlorophyll right here, but that ultimately donates an electron to this special electron acceptor chlorophyll denoted A sub 0. Okay, now A sub 0 will then transfer its electron to this guy, which is called phylo phyloquinone. Okay, and phyloquinone can accept. A, a maximum of two electrons. So in order to fully reduce phyloquinone into phyloquinol, so this will get reduced into phyloquinol, in order for that complete reduction to take place, it's going to take two, um, two reductions by this special electron acceptor chlorophyll A sub zero. But in any case, the phyloquinol is going to transfer each electron through a series of iron sulfur centers. So this, this series of electron transfers occurs through a series of iron sulfur centers. Okay, But the final electron acceptor, at least that's part or at least attaches to this protein, is a very special protein right here called ferredoxin. And ferredoxin is also an iron sulfur containing protein. And we're actually going to look at sort of how that occurs right now. Okay, so what I have drawn here, uh, up here, sort of in the middle of the page, again, we saw P700 get excited, okay, and it donates an electron to A sub 0, which donates another electron to A sub 1, and it also receives another electron, reducing A sub 1 into totally reduced phylloquinol. And then phylloquinol transfers one electron at a time through a series of, of iron sulfur centers and then those iron sulfur centers transfer electrons one at a time so one at a time to ferredoxin okay now one thing I do want to mention before we get into ferredoxin's physiology is notice when when P700 gets raised in energy and it donates an electron to A sub 0 what happens well you would end up with P700 in the oxidized state but it can't stay like that so just like in the case of p680 there has to be an electron acceptor that donates an electron to p700 
Well, what was that electron acceptor? Well, the electron acceptor is plastocyanin. So what ends up happening is this electron acceptor, more specifically, let me erase this, more specifically, you could call this electron acceptor, this is the copper cation from plastocyanin. So we could say basically that this is, uh, get my brush, plastocyanin, but specifically it's the copper one plus cation. And it donates one electron to P700. And of course, that regenerates the reduced form of P700 in the normal state. And that also regenerates plastocyanin, but with the copper in the two plus state. So now that plastocyanin is free to accept another electron from cytochrome F, which is part of the cytochrome B6F complex. Okay, so basically the purpose of plastocyanin and that copper is to be able to donate an electron to P700 once P700 donates an electron to A sub zero, okay? Because once P700 donates the electron to A sub zero, that special chlorophyll acceptor, it becomes this positively charged electron hole. And so to fill that hole, it needs an electron from plastocyanin. Okay, so now we're starting to see how everything fits together. And if you need more help with that, go back to the previous video and watch that. Okay, now we have ferrodoxin in the reduced state. So now we have this ferrodoxin that we have to worry about. Okay, so this right here, this is the iron sulfur center that's part of ferrodoxin, okay? Um, and so what happens is, is this iron sulfur center that is part of, if we go back to this picture, the iron sulfur centers that are part of the photosystem one, okay? So these ones that are circled in purple, these are part of photosystem one. They're gonna transfer electrons one at a time to, a, to ferrodoxin. So this iron sulfur center right here, this is part of ferrodoxin, okay? It's a coenzyme used by ferrodoxin, and it's going to receive those electrons one at a time from the iron sulfur centers of photosystem one. And that's ultimately gonna generate this iron sulfur center that's part of ferrodoxin into the reduced state. So we denote that by saying, ferrodoxin in the reduced state. And the question is, is what happens to ferrodoxin in the reduced state? Well, as we'll see in the next video, we're sort of coming to the end of this video, ferrodoxin, each one that's in the reduced state, is going to donate an electron into this enzyme, which is called ferrodoxin NADP oxidoreductase. Okay? Ferrodoxin NADP oxidoreductase uses FAD as a coenzyme, okay? And the electrons basically from ferrodoxin are gonna be transferred one at a time to FAD to ultimately make this FADH minus anion. And then the FADH is gonna transfer a hydride to NADP plus to make NADPH. We're gonna go in excruciating detail on this enzyme in the next video, but I at least wanna get you going on where these electrons from ferrodoxin are going. One ferrodoxin comes in in the reduced state, transfers its electrons to FAD to make an FAD radical. Okay, then another electron comes in from another ferrodoxin in the reduced state, transfers the electron to the, fer or to the FAD radical to make this guy, which is the FADH minus anion. And that will transfer a hydride to NADP plus to make NADPH. Okay, and in each case, when ferrodoxin transfers an electron to the flavin, it ends up going back to the oxidized state. So in total, we use two ferrodoxins in the reduced state and we generate two ferrodoxins in the oxidized state. And once the ferrodoxin gets back to the oxidized state, it can come back over here and pick up another electron from the iron sulfur center, okay? That's part of photosystem one, okay? So that's key to understand. Okay, so hopefully that made sense. And the, in the next video, we're going to talk more about this enzyme, ferrodoxin NADP oxidoreductase. See you in the next video.